a cochlear implant has two parts. It has an external sound processor and then it has the implant itself. Uh, the implant itself is actually positioned right under the skin, just right on the head in this location right here. And there are two components to the implant. There's an antenna with a stimulator and then there's a, a tiny lead with an electrode array that's inserted into the inner ear or the cochlea. And the way it works, the user or the recipient has a device that looks a lot like a hearing aid that he or she would wear on his or her ear. It picks up sound. There's a computer in this device that determines how much stimulation the recipient will need in order to be able to hear that sound. And then it sends that information or that signal along this short cable to a transmitting disc or, or coil basically that, that acts like an antenna. And that information is sent across the skin by a radio signal to this receiving device, which picks it up, sends it to another computer that's located under the skin, which then sends tiny electrical pulses to this tiny wire that's attached to the inner ear, and it stimulates the auditory nerve directly. And where it differs from a hearing aid is that more often than not, when people have significant hearing loss, they have damage in the inner ear. Most people think it's nerve deafness, but it's actually damage in the inner ear, the part that stimulates the auditory nerve. So that tiny wire, it takes over that lost function in the inner ear, and it stimulates the auditory nerve directly. With a hearing aid, it's, it's just basically a fancy amplifier. It makes sounds louder um, so that it's more likely that the inner ear will respond to, to, to speech or environmental sounds when there's hearing loss. Um, but you get to a point where you just simply can't make sounds loud enough with the hearing aid because the hearing loss is so severe or there's so much damage in the inner ear when even if we make sounds loud enough or high enough in level, we're stimulating a damaged or impaired inner ear and the signal that's sent to the auditory nerve is distorted, so it's still not clear for the user. Prior to my cochlear implants, I'd been hearing impaired. I, my hearing loss was diagnosed when I was 16, but um, I probably been, had some sort of hearing loss all my life. So as I got older, uh, my hearing continued to decrease to where I could no longer understand speech. It was not about volume for me, it was about clarity. And that's a lot of misconception about hearing loss is that, that some people think, well, if I just talk a little louder, they'll be able to understand me. And that's not the case. So as I continued to lose my hearing, I was no longer able to communicate unless I was looking straight at you and looking at your lips. So that meant no telephone, no, you know, anybody in the back seat of my car, those kind of things. So after I had my cochlear implant, you know, I had my surgery, and then a month later, I had my activation. And at first, it's very loud. It was uh, just a lot of noise. My brain was trying to make sense of all this sound that it had not heard in a long, long time. Probably after about three weeks, I was able to start understanding speech. I recall my husband and I were in the car and um, he was listening to OU football on AM radio and I was able to understand where the, where the ball was and what down it was. So that was pretty oh wow because I had not listened to radio in probably 10 years. The surgery is very easy most of the time. There are not very many side effects. Um, the benefits far outweigh anything and I just think that they would be thrilled with the results.